Uh, hey everyone, uh, my name is Rishi. Uh, I work at Microsoft on Azure Orbital. So uh, I think this is a lightning talk. So I'll quickly go over uh, how Orbital adopts virtual RF and why we find it uh, very useful on our platform. So I'm just gonna jump right into it. Uh, we have fully adopted and are embracing uh, virtual RF. And uh, at our sites, we don't have hardware modems, we have digitizers, and we stream that RF right into the cloud. So we could do S and X band and all the way up to 500 megahertz of uh, streaming. And there's two uh, ways we do the software radio modem. We can manage it for you, or you could uh, bring your own. So we deliver the Vita RF right into the customer uh, VNet in this case. So this gives us a lot of flexibility. So customers can bring their own modem, or if they don't want to care about that headache, we just take care of it for them. So what does this do? It enables us to be very agile. So typically for spacecraft communication links, we find that each link is unique and each spacecraft is unique. And there's always like certain parameters that are uh, specially you know, attributed to that, that particular link. So it's not, you can't just get one hardware modem that fits all. So what does that mean? Uh, vendor diversity is not possible. You have to pay a lot of money on NRE to onboard each customer. It's not flexible and uh, doing ground station and service generally just becomes really hard. So we adopt uh, virtual RF and we build it on top of Vita 49, so that's now Diffie. And we work with a ecosystem of partners, Kratos and Emergent now and more to uh, pull that together. So that's the options that we have right now with Diffie. Um, if everyone, uh, as everyone conforms to this standard, we can, in theory, begin to onboard a lot of these players into Orbital and offer their um, software modems as well. So another aspect about virtual RF is actually in the architecture as well. So on the left is where we started, and on the right is kind of where we're trending towards. So before we had a conventional deployment model, so just hardware modems, uh, you know, supply chain issues I talked about, security is a hassle, and on-site maintenance is also a hassle. So where are we today? We have the cloud-based virtual modems and digitizers at the site. What does that mean? We can do some really cool stuff with uh, capacity management, like channel uh, channelization and combiners, uh, if you have multiple channels in one band. Uh, we can scale really fast. And we're kind of future-proof in some ways that we can like easily adopt DVB-S2 and S2X and whatever other new waveforms that come online. And where, where do we see this going? Uh, now, instead of just running the uh, software radios or the virtual network functions in the cloud, uh, we're trying to move them and, and enable them all over the place so we can move them closer to the antenna or on site. So you can take advantage of even more high performance compute or FPGA. There's options for even higher security. And then um, like another benefit for on-prem uh, use of these software modems is you can get really consistent with your DevOps. So you could go like from lab to flight. And that's something I'll talk about uh, tomorrow. And that concludes my lightning talk. <laughs> There's a picture of a ground station at our data center at Quincy. So that's a 6.1 meter dish, uh, X over Y, and uh, it's in a radome. And in general, that's what data centers uh, look like from the outside, just kind of plain gray buildings. Uh, not much to see. <laughs> Highly secure. And oh yeah, I'll be uh, at the desk um, now and today and tomorrow in case anyone has questions. All right, um, cool. Thank you, Rishi, and thank you, Microsoft, for, for sponsoring this year. And uh, yeah, definitely check these guys out at the, at the Expo Hall. Any questions in the room here before we head off to break? All right. Well, thanks, Rishi.